So hello everyone and welcome to the panel about Warhammer 40,000, how to get complex lower cross in your games. So I'm Olivia, an associate artist here at Warwick Digital, and I worked on Warhammer 40,000 Bulgan. My panels are she, her. So we're joined today by our wonderful guests. So let's start with Anatoly. Yep. Uh, hi. hi there, uh, my name is Anatoly, I'm the guy in charge of the Warhammer 40,000 role trader project. Yeah, thank you. And how about yourself, Dom? Uh, hi, I'm uh, Dom McDowell, and I run Cubicle 7 Entertainment. Uh, we are a tabletop role-playing company, um, and other kind of uh, tabletop games as well. Um, but I'm here today to talk about tabletop role-playing. Uh, we make the uh, Warhammer 40,000 Imperium Maledictum role-playing game, and uh, Wrath and Glory for more action 40k uh, same things. Uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, and Soulbound for Age of Sigmar, and lots of other things as well, so... That's us. Yeah, thank you. Great introduction. And how about yourself, Arthur? Hello, I'm Arthur. I am the head of community PR and comms at Frontier, and I had the wonderful honour of working on Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, which I believe is the world's longest name in video game history. Uh, so yeah, that's what I do. Um, happy to be on this panel. Thanks a lot for the invite. Yeah, great. And just wanted to let you know that you can find all links to our guest's work in the description. So, to begin, first question to all panellists. Is randomness part of the setting of Warhammer 40,000 because at its core it's a tabletop war game of dice? Or because at its core it has realms of chaos? Mm. Do we need to pick one of these options? <laughs> um, however you would like to interpret it. <laughs> yeah. whole, I've, got to, I've got to start on the side of Chaos Gates, though. I, I think I'm coming in law heavy. And um, I think that the uh, yeah the when you've got a setting that just has like pure possibility and um, endlessness at its centre, then that's yeah definitely going to introduce uh, a lot a lot of that. Yeah, I think I think for me, I mean, obviously working on the games is great, but I was a fan before I was doing that, and I think very much like what Dom just said, uh, it was the law that drew me into to Warhammer Forty Thousand, and the Chaos Gods themselves are very intriguing and i'm obviously big into the heresy and all that sort of stuff so just the randomness in in terms of like what's going to happen next with all these various factions who's going to remain loyal disloyal it was very very intriguing when, as a young a lot younger man back then of 1990 i think i was doing that and 1995 i was sort of getting involved uh it was it was a, a wonderfully rich world that you never really knew where it was going to go so that was for me why i got involved um. For me, Warhammer is about uh, emerging stories that happen uh, near the table while you're reading or fantasizing about things that you you read or, or other stuff and uh, the the sheer randomness of the stuff happening either on a on a dice or on a chaos schemes. Uh, that's the things that um, sparks your imagination that allows you to immerse yourself deeper into what's happening and uh, one of the secrets of success of Warhammer is a, as a setting as a franchise lies in a, in that that this setting allows you to to attach yourself to it and to to feel yourself as a part of it and the dice and the randomness and the weird stuff that's happening all around the setting is the things that helps us to do it. Thank you. Does anyone have any other thoughts on this question? I think, no, I, think, I, think, I, think <laughs> I think Anatoly did it great there. I think getting into it, I think the thing about Warhammer is there's something pretty much there for everyone. Um, so like I always attach myself to a particular chapter. Mine was the Space Wolves. Uh, so yeah, I think he's right. I think that just the, the randomness of, of just, it's, it's, there's so much there and you don't know what's going to happen next. And you do get invested because you sort of pledge, you put your flag in the ground with a particular faction or character. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's a wonderfully rich universe. Mm. I, I think that the, the world building, um, is, you know, is wonderful in, in so many ways. I think that the, um, that there's so many like little mysteries and hints and things like that, that the, uh, 
that when, when you've got your your area of the law that you're you're really specializing in and getting into you know even then you've got those mysteries and there's those uncharted regions that you can really sort of explore yourself so i think it's uh, you know really well done um and, and just leaves that that gap for that space for everybody to, to expand into yeah great um i think now I'm going to further into the topic so for the genre of your game be it turn-based strategy or crpg or tabletop rpg can you please tell us how randomness or random elements show up in your game and i'm actually going to start with something a little bit different that i've mentioned above which is um, with our example um, for bolt gun because um, it's a first person shooter i would say it's quite prescriptive in terms of weapon attack because due to the weapon that is being used and the, ran the um, player skill of course the randomness does come into play when it comes to the enemy behavior and like the player behavior and enemy reactions there's a line between keeping things within the player's control so they can kind of predict kind of know um, what's going to happen the kind of outcomes but also keeping the elements of surprise so they're, they're interested because of that so we find that these this keeps things true to the law but also enables, enables the player to feel more involved in the in the events of the world kind of placing them more in sort of granular aspect of it so would anyone like to start off from from that i think what you're saying there about the uh, yeah the, the the damage and uh, when when players are choosing or making choices it's really important that that choice is meaningful isn't it i, I think yeah. uh, balancing the the randomness with the predictable you know impact of a particular choice i think that's really important for probably for all of us i'd imagine isn't it yeah i mean i i think so in, in chaos gate um so chaos gate demon hunters is a turn-based strategy game so if people are familiar with games like xcom or stuff like that or phoenix point um they'll be aware of or sort of break the, how the game plays out um, and i think randomness is, is quite an interesting subject actually with chaos gate because if you're familiar with with, with um a lot of turn-based strategy games there, there's a sort of random element to whether you shoot to hit um and and what we've done with chaos gate to try and keep it a bit more law focused is is the gray knights are i mean these are like supreme warriors i mean i don't know how everyone sits on this or their own opinion but i mean i i put them just underneath the custodies in terms of just like these guys are super super tough they're, they're literally trained to fight demons this their entire purpose is is to go out and obviously hunt demons um we didn't want the players to feel like they were in any way inept so if they were going to shoot at somebody they were going to hit them so the randomness element of, of sort of the the rng in most turn-based strategy games we sort of removed so we gave the player the ability to look at and say look if a gray knight's going to shoot he's going to hit but he will tell you the randomness might come in the damage uh depending on like how much damage they're going to do so it's the risk reward um there's a randomness uh in terms of very much like we have a we have like a, a warp surge um meter in the game so Obviously, as as the the different units, both chaos and sort of the grey knights use their their psychic powers, it sort of uh, antagonizes the warp. And if you keep doing that, obviously everyone knows here, antagonizing the warp is not a good idea. Uh, and then at some point, uh, there is a random effect that will happen, which is really interesting to watch. So and sometimes and it's never good. I mean, nothing in forty k is ever good. <laughs> nothing's, nothing's friendly. So when the warp gates open, it's either you're getting a boon to the enemy, a debuff to your units, maybe it's it's resupply. But I think the biggest random factor in all of this is always the player. And we see this in all of our games, but also we're here talking about 40k, but it's how the player reacts to certain things, it's what the player does with a certain level or um, how they approach a certain situation. Do You'll find some players will will have a certain sort of squad loadout and just go in a, a certain way. They'll, they'll equip all their Grey Knights with Terminator armor because Terminator is best. Um, or they might just go sort of somehow play ultra defensive, ultra aggressive. Um, that for us has been the most interesting thing. I think one of the challenges as well of, of I don't know, sort of post-launch adjusting the game mechanics to seeing what players are actually doing. Because I, I think when we create a game, I don't know how you, I'm, I'll open this up to everyone. I won't keep hogging it, but I think we have a plan and you launch a game and that plan goes immediately out of the window because the players do the exact opposite to what you thought they were going to do. So you're like, oh, well, you, you're not doing this the way you're supposed <laughs> to do it. Um, so it's always a player, I think, is the most random thing. I don't know how everybody else feels about it. 
Oh yeah, definitely. I would imagine with us where the players can literally do anything um, and become obsessed with the most minor detail um, and, you know, despite all uh, signposts to the plot being very clear, they're, <laughs> they're off uh, obsessing over, um, I'm pretty sure that orphan we saw earlier has the key to everything. It's like, no, they were an incidental detail thrown in. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, with us, certainly. And it's, we, we, I don't, uh, with the Imperium Maledictum, uh, which is our, our, our new Warhammer 40,000 game that's really aimed at uh, investigative sort of skullduggery in the uh, the dark shadows of the Imperium and how the, the different bits of the uh, the apparate machinery of the, of the Imperium uh, interact and work together. Um, the... We have to be quite um, careful, really, with how we balance that because you're not space marines. You know, you're you're not some of the uh, the, the you're, you're very squishy humans to uh, in the most part. So balancing how like combat, for example, works in that situation where you really haven't got much of a leeway between between dead and not dead. Um, I mean, you can so, fight a space marine if you want to. <laughs> yeah, not a good yeah, idea, probably. right? No, probably not. Probably not so good. Um, so, so in that one, for example, we built in a load of um, mechanics that reinforced the themes, but also encouraged uh, sensible player behavior. So the um, uh, b- before you get into a fight, if you're researching, if you're setting the ground where it's going to take place, you know, if you're luring them in, um, ambushing, then you get um, advantages that, uh, that push the combat your way. If you don't do that stuff, then it's like really messy, really fast. So it encourages that play style that, um, that that suits the game. Uh, in a, in my perspective, uh, almost all of the um, significant parts of the Warhammer as a as an image as a fantasy circles around power fantasy. Uh, players option and it doesn't matter in which media the player is playing uh, the player's option to get a grip on what's going on and the randomness is just one of the challenges that we can provide uh, to the player for him not for his characters but for him to feel that he mastered the source that he won over it and uh for example, we we built our in inner trader. We built our role playing system heavily on a on a previous Fantasy Flight games uh, source materials. We've got these uh, percentage rolls, uh, roll lower than a target number, stuff like that. And we've got lots of these rolls, and they are like pretty nasty. You're gonna be struggling all over the game because not just it's Warhammer, but we need to give you the horizon for for you to understand the points in which you want to excel so this is like uh the road of the of the player inside the game isn't to won every battle is to realize which battles he want to won to find the ways to won this battle and afterwards the player itself feels like a winner feels like he for example we've got this like tremendously hard uh boss fight after in, in the end of the first chapter when your uh, rogue trader rating first time encounter case space marine he's like blowing the shuttles out of the out of the way he's like all around you he he has like free action to kick yourself yeah to kick you to drop you down and to stop your like action and it's just free action he 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 done lots of other stuff. So, like, lots of the players struggle in this moment. But whenever we have a service, this particular boss fight, this particular enemy is a favorite one, is a most rememberable one, because the ones who struggle and won feel themselves as they actually won, feel themselves as this, uh, this win matter. And... Uh, Whenever we try to do the gaming in a serious way, most of the time we we, we want to to make player feels like he did meaningful stuff, mm-hmm. stuff that matters. And the randomness is our way to insert the like enemy system, enemy number, enemy like mental challenge, enemy 
that could be one. That's what we've actually do. It's yeah. a really, really good point. I think um, without challenge, there's no payoff for the for the player. If they if they don't if it's too easy, then there's no sense of victory once you finally achieve, you know, beating the, the Chaos Space Marine. And I think in in all of the subjects, I mean, you mentioned it as well, Dom. Like the Warhammer Forty Thousand universe is unforgiving, especially if you're just a human. Like you are literally the lowest of the food yeah. chain. Like they're, they're, everything's going to kill you. A door would probably kill you, given half a chance, but. Um, and it, but it's it's balancing that with we're also making a, a game and it has to be enjoyable and, and we have to allow to a, to a degree we have to allow some failure but it has to be a challenge mm. and one of the things we found was um you know we had in one of the first few levels on on, on chaos gate was there was you would fight uh chaos cultists now if if you know the law i mean, I mean they're using just, you know almost modern day weaponry what we have today against a, a grey knight so really realistically they're not doing any damage i mean they would literally flick these people and, and kill them but in the early levels the player is learning the mechanics of the game so it would be very unfair for us to be like hey you know you know what um we're going to let these chaos cultists kill you but as the game goes on um they, they but they still have to provide a challenge and they have to teach um they have to teach the player the core mechanics but i do think yeah without without a challenge there can't be a payoff and i think getting that balance right is one of the hardest things we do because of randomness again with the player, they will always find the meta. They'll always find the way to be like, right, what's the, because like with, with our game and I, I guess, and, and to love like in yours, there's, there's builds of characters and they'll, they'll look for that, the ultimate meta build of a character that just can one shot something or We had a particular boss and um, I'm trying to think it was one of the, so basically there's this, sort of five or six bosses of which are random in, in our game, the, the, the Heralds of Nurgle. And uh, uh, I think it was the Great Unclean one, which is supposed to be this really big, really tough fight. The players had worked out if they get to a certain point in the game and they get two or three of their characters to a certain point utilising uh, the stun and um, uh, the st earning back your, your psi power ability, they could literally kill this this boss by turn two. So this, this is a big build up to this massive fight. And these grey knights just rock up and like, oh, okay, cool. And then two turns later, this this guy's dead. So we had to do a little little bit of jiggery pokery behind the scenes just to balance that off because there was no reward then. And it felt whilst yeah. players were happy they'd beaten it, they were disappointed that there was no payoff to that moment. So yeah, it was tough. It's a scale thing, I think, isn't it? On that because you, you you want you want um, you want smart decisions by the players to um, to, you know, to to make those challenges possible or you know to to, to that they have an impact on their chances of success, but you don't want to go too far and yeah, hand them that kind of uh, turn two victory over the big bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I always think we, we're kind of um, shepherds of, of uh, chance. It's uh, we, we, we are bringing it in and um, trying to, you know, have the, uh, all, all of the, uh, the jeopardy and the, um, uh, the, the, the uncertainty that that brings in, that brings the excitement with it and the tension um, but uh, at the same time, you know, making sure that we're, we're giving everybody a really good experience. And I think because you, know, you get to that thing where, where pure randomness on its own is not a satisfying way to lose. No. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's treading that, that middle line, isn't it? It's a really good term, shepherds of chance. I, I really like that. <laughs> I, I think, but, I mean, mechanically, the, the thing about the games, I guess that's the difficulty level, right? As players start mm. changing difficulty levels, we start messing with the options of like, well, you know, on a harder difficulty level, the chances you're going to get this as a warp surge is greatly increased because it's going to yeah. be way more difficult for you. I don't know how it's the same for other games and, and how that works. Obviously, the tougher enemies might spawn in and, you know, there's less ammo on a map or whatever it's going to be. But I think it's still chance, but it's it's shepherds. I like that. I'll keep that. Thanks, Dom. <laughs> I'll claim it's mine. <laughs> feel free, feel free. As long as we all form um, a band called that, yes. then I think that's yes. the uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm down. Just don't, don't have me as lead singer. <laughs> it's definitely like very, very interesting to hear this sort of perspective. Um, I'm currently playing for Baldur's Gate 3 and I'm definitely having a pro trader as one of the games I'm going to try afterwards. And sometimes some choices I make, like Oh, find some random tunnel somewhere, like some, or jump to set on ledge. But I didn't know where I could go. But now maybe it makes me think. Did I like? Did I think that um, I found something cool and new, or did someone design to make me think <laughs> that it would be that it was by chance or like just randomly found it? 
Like, um, how do you find? I some you think you sometimes make players think that they find things by chance, or? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think because we we tend to put a load of red herrings in anyway, so uh, that's always good fun having that like range of gossip that you can pick up on and go, ah, this is obviously been told to me as a clue. No, nah, it's just stuff we made up because we needed the last page. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. It's all beautifully fun. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, but yeah, that that is interesting. Is that that sense of agency, isn't it? The uh, with with, uh, with with tabletop uh, role playing, it tends to be referred to as how railroady um, the adventure is. So uh, you, you're trying to um, achieve a a sense of, of player agency and player choices, taking everybody through everything and. and you know, obviously, in a published adventure, um, there's a limited amount of, of material that we can cover. So there is an element of, you know, that, that, that you are going to be going from scene to scene to scene. But uh, the art is sort of making it look like it's the player's ideas to follow this thing through. Um, so, yeah, that's maybe maybe a difference with, with that's where we're trying to preserve that kind of, I just was in massive open world CCR, uh, computer RPGs, then, you know, the similar thing, isn't it? Uh, aside from yellow letters and stuff like that, uh, in any in any system, in any sequence of choices, which present you a way to make good choices, there is the other side of the coin: the option to make the bad choices. And when there is a like variety, a spectrum of choices, and there is a mm, consequence of uh, several steps of choices. It's natural to feel yourself as an explorer or smart guy or like basically feel yourself good when you're realizing the better options, tie it one to another and move to the, yeah, your ultimate design. And uh, it doesn't matter what this design particularly is because you, 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 you may want to make brilliant social lead uh, character in a, in a tabletop game and you're piling up all options to add bonuses, reroll, fail, saves, uh, allow additional peers to you know, several factions and voila, you have your ultimate uh, spoke person guy who just walk in a bar and suddenly everyone wants to join him. That's like ultimate win in a, in a head of the of the player and it's not to put it in an honest way it's not the player who invented it was designed in a such way that in every sequence of choices there will be like obvious ones and not so obvious you know, rewarding and like basic ones and uh, like for example in a, in a demon hunters there are like a lot of options that are obviously better than other ones but if you're playing not the first time you know that it's not true and the, uh, there's other way around and you need to pile up some particular things to to make a build uh the purest form of such an uh, mm, such an experience is a uh, diablo when you're uh imagining the build that will came up after you close all the rifts you you came up with the idea of I want such rare things, such rare things, such passive, such uh, amulets, and you start to move on to to the ultimate your design. But it was like some guys who came up with every separate piece of such a design for you, and who like who were struggling really hard to to allow you to like put several different things to from several meaningful choices and to find your uh, innate way to express yourself in the game. Yep. Yep, I agree with that. <laughs> There's so much that goes in. For us as well, because we're working through Games Masters as well, so it's um, it, it's it's the how that's presented by the, the people that we're, I suppose, with adventures that we're, we're briefing them with published modules and things like that um and uh, and and then they're delivering the the game experience to their players so that that's always something that's quite interesting to to try and allow for and uh, to give them the the best tools that 
you can for them to be able to, to deliver um you know, yeah that that great tabletop role playing experience so that was i think with the enemy within we we, we yeah, for warhammer fantasy role play there's a legendary uh, role playing tabletop campaign the enemy within and we released a uh, director's cut um edition of that and going through and we we took some things out one, one of the things that we put in was a uh, a load of npcs that were there to really Untrusively help to get the players back into the plot. <laughs> so if they've gone off on some mad tangent, chasing uh, that orphan. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but trying to do that without it looking like uh, they're looking like that's what was happening. So yeah. uh, that's one of the things for us. You know, anything that we can do to to provide GMs with all the tools to to really be able to uh, to help keep things on track and to yeah to help um, help them run their games smoothly. Yeah, I think the interesting thing, talking about the, the GM, I think with like with Chaos Gate example, the player is their own GM, so they, mm-hmm. they they their story is their own, and I think that's what makes it interesting. And we, in terms of the randomness, the, the plot is quite linear in terms of this video game. In terms of the start, is middle, and there's an end, and there's a clear objective we want players to get towards. It's I think the journey that they create and the characters they create is the important part for for us. So allowing them to customize the Grey Knights and, and the, I think everybody does this they'll name each Grey Knight after friends or family and, and you know you get berated whether or not you, you did well the last mission and they'll create stories around and it's their own lore as well they create around their own characters and and there's relics and stuff they can requisition from Titan and, and they try and get they try and do missions to accumulate like uh, to, to and a lot of you talking about Diablo they're talking about Titan, to accumulate the best builded weapons and the best gear set uh, for these particular Grey Knights, and they become like the best Grey Knights, and they try and elevate each one to a different role, so just a card to a chaplain or whatever it's going to be. And um, I think watching players do that is great, and also whilst the story is linear, it's also quite fun and rewarding. And 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 we we allow what our what we try to do very hard is there's quite a lot of or I say we comp- the guys at Complex who now work with us. Um, what we try and do is is deliver like a a degree of environmental storytelling because it's a very obviously you know, it's a very visual thing and there are some little nods to some of the characters you'll meet later on there like and if you're a 40k fan or a fan of grey knights there's a little there's some nods to some really key characters that you're going to meet from 40k lore who are who are really quite significant in the grey knight history um and it's seeing players excitement of being like oh does that is that going to mean i'm going to meet this person and what will this person be like and that was quite tough um, and we had a lot of backwards and forwards working with Games Workshop on just getting those particular characters right. And I don't know if I can spoil it or not, because the game's been out. It's been out for you, but it's just come out on consoles. I don't know if I can spoil this or not, but uh, <laughs> this is going on Steam. It's been out on PC. I can spoil it. It's fine. Um, so one of the characters is Caldor Drago, and he is, like, super tough, super, super tough. And, you know, and him and Mortarion have a fair old bit of history uh, going back, and those two meet again in the video game. So it's it's really nice to watch players get there and, and try and get their Grey Knights be worthy of that moment to, to, to sit there. So you'll see, and it's quite interesting for us to watch in socials and commentary, players, the, the non-law-wise sort of law wise players play, play the game for the game, and they're just, they're just playing the game and enjoying it. And then you get the, the sort of heavy 40k law players you're playing at like Cal or Drago we're gonna turn up and I'm the Grey Knight that's there. I'm I'm it's my squad that fight Mortarian with him and it's a big moment for him. So it's it's great to watch those those players sort of react to certain elements in different ways. Some players didn't care at all. They were like, oh, whatever. <laughs> this guy turns up, I want to kill Mortarian. It's like, oh, you're yeah. not gonna but, you know. <laughs> no, but the ones who care though, that like makes their month. You know, it, yeah. it's oh, uh, yeah. And I mean, I'm in that bracket <laughs> definitely as well. But uh, yeah, seeing those things that uh, yeah, the, 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 the familiar characters and the, just the little nods here and there, isn't it? It, it, it uh, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. When we had the pitch meet and they mentioned Caldor Drago, I was the only one sort of frothing at the mouth, and everyone was like, "What's wrong with you?" And I was like, "Do you know who this guy is? He's basically like he's like that scene out of um, the Watchmen where Rorschach's in the prison." I was like, that's him, but just in, in the warp. I said they they're not he's not trapped with them, they're trapped with him. He's just massacring all his demons. Like he's he's out there just killing everything. I said he's a super tough character, and people who didn't know 40k were like, oh that's cool, off. Whatever, move on to the next slide. <laughs> like, ah, he's a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I would, I would say like that definitely was very insightful, and I'm I'm just hoping that by the time I get to play more games again, I'm gonna actually forget about it, because I'm uh, right. <laughs> pointing myself fun of oh, actually no, I'm I'm smart. I figured out. No, it's actually it was all to make you think by, by your winning, by your in, by your smart, by you figured it out. Yeah, but, no, but nothing's nothing's um, nothing's the same as your playthrough of that game as well. You know, I, I think the. Yeah. The um, it, it is all you know. It, it is all unique as well, and you're bringing that aspect to it. You know, the that's uh, one of the things I love about games. It's 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 personal and a communal experience. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's um, yeah, it, it, it's a yeah, cr creative combination <laughs> is the best I can come up with. But uh, I think that's the, yeah, that is the the thing. I think uh, Anton and Dom, you probably get this more so than I would, and maybe Olivia as well. I mean, it's it's. There's certain fixed points in our game, like you'll have a certain mission that everybody gets, and hearing players how they approach it, like no one has the same mission, and they all have a, a, like a war story to tell, which is really fun. And um, I guess in in sort of road trade, it's a whole different thing, right? It's like I did this and this happened, and what happened in your playthrough? Did you play dogmatic? Did you play whatever? And then obviously in RPG, it's like we did this quest. Um, what did you do? How did you approach? It? Who was in your Who was in your um, sort of uh, your group and then mm -hmm. I guess with bolt gun it's it's a case of how did you fight you know the you know the the zinch the the lord of change when you when you cover against him how did you approach it and everyone's got a different story but it's it's fun to watch players approach things mm. yeah definitely I think now we can move on to the next question which is I wanted to ask you how you see randomness in the events either of your game which I mean we spoke with it a lot so probably the second part would be more sort of open for conversation, which is in the wider universe. Although, of course, I'm, I appreciate them from wider universe we're commenting as fans. So I think it kind of plays quite a bit of a role. Like we have the unpredictability of a warp. We have the Primarchs just being scattered all over the galaxy. I have even things like random error in the Administratum, which then results of sending like wrong troops to a wrong planet to fight a wrong war as a novel called 15 Hours. So, yeah, I wonder, how, how do you feel the joy of the setting and your work in it? Um, tough question. Not it's tough to answer because there's so much to answer, I guess. Um, I, 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 in terms of where the universe is going, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm left up to date with the current stuff because I'm still getting through the heresy stuff. Um, but um, I think it's super exciting that all the Primarchs are coming back, that that's great, and the opportunities that might lead to. I say all the Primarchs, obviously, Russ, not Russ isn't perfect, he's the best Primarch, by the way. Um, <laughs> but um, obviously, you've got Captain Boring is back, um, so, you know, the Ultramarines guy, Gilliman's back, uh, and obviously, then the Lion's back, um, but Russ needs to return. So that's that kind of stuff's interesting, I think. You know, I've only just, I actually don't just started playing Rogue Trader, um, I wouldn't say like l last week, week before. Um, and I'm really excited to see where I get to with this because I'm trying, in my mind, I'm trying to play it a certain way. And I'm already, I'm failing because I wanted to be like this. I'm going to, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be super Imperial. I'm going to be almost, almost kind of like Tau-ish kind of like, I'm okay. I'm kind of a good guy. I'm not being a good guy and being terrible at the minute. I've killed a lot of people for no real reason. Um, and now I'm encountering elements that um, I haven't quite met the Chaos Space Marine yet, but I have come against a, a warp gate being summoned and I still don't know what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm getting murdered quite badly, but I'm really enjoying the law and it being so, so true to it. So I'm very excited to see what happens with this progressing and, and how many strings you pull on um that's in here because there's so much potential i think that's the thing when you play a warhammer game be it tabletop or rpg you don't know where the the, the gm is going to go because there's so many threads to pull on you you kind of think oh it could be this and you can absolutely sort of red herring them and, and turn it around something else um so yeah tough question um i don't know i could i could talk about warhammer f forever um but yeah <laughs> I think for us, it's back again, back to the the uh, the randomness of players and which directions they may go in, and uh, how best we can try and keep ahead of that, and uh, uh, yeah, providing the uh, the information that they uh, or the stuff that they want to they want to look into. Um, for with with Imperium Maledictum, uh, we are set in the the Macarian sector, so it's a huge sort of 
chunk of the uh, of the Imperium that we've got to play with. Uh, all the worlds conquered by Lord Solar Macarius in the Macarian Crusade, and then that then sort of fell into uh, uh, some, some some issues afterwards uh, after he died. So uh, there's yeah a huge range of things going on, huge range of threats, and I think the uh, making sure that we we've got some of those that are um, you know coherent threats that are developing into plots, and other things that are maybe more along that kind of random lines of just. You know, the Imperium is so vast and the Macarian sector is so, so big that you'll have just things breaking out all the time. Somewhere, somewhere, you know, there's going to be the gene stealer gods rising up. There's going to be uh, uh, chaos stuff left, right and center. Um, it'll be a bit like whack-a-mole, but um, uh, only only more, more, more sort of... Uh, uh, more gross, I'd imagine. The uh, tyrant in whack-a-mole, we shouldn't make that, should we? That, that would just be disgusting. <laughs> um, the... Uh, uh, but yeah, making sure that you've got that that sense that you know, this is a real living galaxy, is a real living universe. Um, there, there's random stuff happening all over the place, just like there is in the real world. And uh, having that say, I think that that helps to contribute to the sense of a living, breathing setting. When yeah, you know, you've got your plots, you've got your your, your big conspiracies, and you've got these developing uh, developing threats. But you've also got just stuff going wrong, left, right, and center. Uh, so one of the one of the the interesting playtest groups that we had. For Imperium Maledictum was the auditor team, um, and it was administratum auditors, and they were terrifying. Like you would not want to be on the receiving end of this audit. It was uh, <laughs> first of all, I suppose when they, they get off the off the the the, uh, the, the whatever vehicles brought them to wherever they are, and you, you can imagine the, um, you know, the, the 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 governor or. Who was running this facility? Just looking at them, you know, they've got their usual kind of stuff. They've got the data pads, they've got the data slates, they've got they've got um, that stuff. One of them's got a melter gun. I'm not quite sure where in the whole you know auditing process this this is used. I mean, they they'll find out, obviously. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so so having having that uh, in, in enough kind of like randomness in there that uh, yeah, that makes it feel you know like it's a real universe. That there's there is just stuff happening all over the place and you're navigating your way through that. That's, uh, yeah, definitely something for us. For our creative team, <clears throat> it's uh, a bit other way. Uh, we were playing uh, tabletop or hammer for like years before mm. uh, development of a rogue trader. We were playing all through the tabletop uh, rogue trader, Black Crusade, Only War, like Death Watch everything that's possible to be played like 10 years ago we were playing and uh it came up that we are fans of a sandbox style and we are fans of a similar chinese agenda so as a players we try to like imagine this thing is like real how does it work for example how often do you pay your tithe who evaluate the quality of things being paid what happens if somebody will vanish during the flight on a black ship? Who will pay? Who will be responsible? Uh, for example, if somebody is like falling apart and the governor of the, of the planet can't afford to pay the tide, who is in charge? The mechanicals that is in charge of the facility, the governor itself, the ships that are like fail to grab all the things needed and every small piece of the like full puzzle that uh, accidentally came together just like sparking it's just like brilliant sensation around you that oh that's how it works and that's a brilliant feeling that uh that were that were fueling our like playing groups mm -hmm. and i know lots of other playing groups who were playing in a, in a different things like in a different styles different agendas and uh, uh whenever we get an opportunity to not just ask a question about this universe but to provide our own answer we would be like the look of something or the words of something or the feeling of something we as a fans like feel ourselves amazed that's brilliant feeling yeah i have a question for for everyone 
um, so we were filled with ideas of challenges for players, uh, talking about the randomness, uh, but just how vast 40k is. We were looking like we, I got very excited about. Oh, we could put this in the game. We could put that in the game. How hard was it to manage your own excitement against the, the you know, making a game or like I guess in a, in a GM's case, making it either impossible or implausible. I guess is is one way of saying it. For, for argument's sake, it'd be great to put in a, a quest where you meet three demon primarchs, but the likelihood of you surviving is 0 0.00 zero zero well, zero minus one million. You're not going to survive it. And if you did survive it, so then it becomes impossible. And if you did survive it, it becomes implausible. Was it difficult? Because we had that with Mortar Mortarian. We were like, we want to put him in here. Mm. We want to be super respectful of the fact that this guy is a demon Primarch. And it's a great challenge. And we have to find a suitable outcome for him mm. that is either a letdown, implausible, or just ridiculous. Um, did you guys have any anything that you were like, I would love to have used this in any of the games and been like, we just can't find a way to put it in here. <laughs> oh, on that one though, like what's wrong with the old and then you woke up and it was all a dream. <laughs> or like Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> <Is it> Dallas? <laughs> you wake up in the shower, it was all a dream. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah good good it's underused now. Like no, no, no one's used that for ages. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, dear. <laughs> yeah oh definitely I, I think i think that there's uh there's again there's so much isn't there there's so much that you could draw and there's so much we'd love to see um i i think the uh i think one of the difficult um well, i don't know if difficult is the right word but one of the things i think that when you're working on on, on warhammer games um that to keep in mind is is that the um the players are there to play in those in that setting they're not there to play in your version of that setting. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's keeping it um, you know, true to what everybody's there for. Isn't it? You know, every, everybody's there for all the the great stuff that they've uh, they, they, they they've uh, loved over the years. So uh, I think that that's definitely a, an aspect of that. Um, yeah, we've done quite well, I think. Yeah, we've um, uh, the yeah actually some of the stuff isn't published on IM yet, so I can't wax too lyrical. But there's some really cool stuff. Um, it was really great to again we talk about the enemy within uh, campaign being able to, uh, to 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 have some, those inter you know, some interactions with with Carl Franz and um, yeah some of the heroes of the empire and then things like that. So yeah, I think we've been, we've been quite lucky, um, and, and I think it's just yeah trying to find that plausible, isn't it? I think trying to sort yeah. of work out how it how how it could potentially work, and then just fall back on the dream sequence if all else fails. I'm basically the guy who is responsible uh, for the project meeting his budget. So uh, I'm the one who's cutting the cool things <laughs> from, from the oh, game. God. But as a, as a like fan, uh, it's really painful to cut things like, oh, let's put Sentinels. Imagine your player will, will enter it and go inside. Oh, and let's order the full tank. Let it... Like, it's all cool. It's all nice. We <laughs> don't have like money and the people and the time to to do everything. So it basically came up to the priorities. It's like the main uh, like feeling, the main idea, the main story plot that we want to tell is like this A, B, C. All other things, if we will be able to like find resources, let's do it. But if not, let's concentrate on better delivery is the main things for example in a in a first iteration of our story there were like completely cut out now chapter on a craft world like the whole wow. chapter of the dairy craft world that is being sieged from several different factions and you are ending up there and there were like good story mm -hmm. but it was a choice either we placate camera or we placate a craft world and like creative uh, core of the team decided that Kamora is uh, like more important for the story, more important for the player base. And we ended up with like cutting up the uh, craft world and every, every production team goes the same way. There is like mm. every time it's more than uh, you want to express more things that you have resources to. And you need to somehow find a way 
to en end up with the main elements. And from time to time, we are failing in this. We are spending money and resources on and not most important things or like making other mistakes. And that's a burden of being a developer. You never know till you know though, right? Until you've done it, you don't know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, definitely. I, I think actually before we move to the next question, I'd like to say just that I think we're lucky when it comes to Baldgun that the cool thing I wanted to add was basically the main premise of the game. Of that, the bold gun. Yeah, the power <laughs> fantasy of being the stun better and better. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm just, okay, from the start. A single veteran uh, going in and just slashing everyone. Okay, all, all, the, all the chaos and um, how you can just find on your way. It, I think that, that's on something that it would be like a cool thing to put. And actually, yeah, if we could put the main thing of a story, well, yeah, just by just by chance, all all of them or just caught just got you know massacred in in that pod where you dropped on. But uh, <laughs> I, I think. Yeah. Bolt Gun, I, I've had so much fun playing Bolt Gun. And I think the aesthetic lends itself so well to that way of playing because you literally feel like the hero of the moment. Like it is, you know, you know it is obviously a, it's a love letter in some respects to Doom and other games like it. And But it's so 40k. I love the fact that it's a, it's a semi-sequel to Space Marine and it, obviously Titus is referenced. I love that it's it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek when you, the, the, the Ultramarine stops and you just reads the Codex. Which I think is absolutely hilarious. Like he's in the reads out the rules that Gilliman's written down. Um, but the 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 power trip, you're right, it's a massive power trip when you're just you, you see a group of enemies and you're like, I'm just going straight in. I'm going straight in and I'm just gonna start wailing on them with all this really cool weaponry that I've got that always has lots of fun. Um yeah, I, I think I'm I think I'm the last I'm in the last act or last level on Bolt Gun and I was so much fun playing that game. Yeah, thank you. It, it... Definitely, I agree with you. What you said. Um, I think, yeah, we can actually move on to the last question now, which is, do you enjoy your other 40k games? Kind of actually going from from that, <laughs> what we said. But um, do what? How do you find the randomness in those games, other 40 games, that you enjoy? I can, I can go. I I absolutely love anything Warhammer. Um, again, I'm I'm very much into. I love lore and I love gameplay. I, I try to play tabletop. I think the only table, the closer I get to tabletop, really, I play Space Hulk or I've played mm. every iteration of Space Hulk. Space Hulk was, in fact, I can tell you now, Space Hulk was the game that got me into to, to 40K, uh, probably yeah. because I was too young to watch uh, Aliens, but I did find a way to watch it. And then I saw this game that looked very much like Aliens happening on the tabletop in the Trocadero in London. And I was like, I want to be part of this. Um, and then just got involved in the lore. Um, I play anything and everything to do with uh, to, to do with 40k that I can get my hands on that, that I, I really enjoy. I enjoy Battle Sector. I think that's great. It's a it's like a it's like a large scale turn based um, uh, video game. Like it's like it's like great um, Demon Hunters, but just with, you're playing with an entire army. Uh, that's really cool. I enjoy that. I play Space Hulk Deathwing. Uh, I played Space Hulk and the Amiga. Um, I'm, I'm playing through or starting to play through Rogue Trader, which I'm really really enjoying. Um, just because it's so rich in lore. And if you understand the the universe, like for me, it's like every every scene I'm literally saying to my wife, do you understand what this means? This is a, this is the sort of world I'm on, this is what's happening. And she's not as big into 40K. She says, lovely, well done, carry on. <laughs> um, so I really enjoy the breadth of it. I have yet to play um, uh, uh, an RPG and I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to play an RPG because I do play d awesome. I would absolutely adore to play a 40k one um but, and, I'm, and i'm really keen to explore that side of things because um i think we're all in the roles that we're in we're all very creative and i think being a creative person your imagination is, is on fire so i think mm. when you play something like a a, a role-playing game your mind is literally the is is the video game because your mind is literally painting the picture and in your mind you're doing the animations of your character so you're like you're you're slash some of a chainsaw and yes you can roll a dice and that is cool but in your mind you're doing something totally different like you you swung under this the guy swung a, a gene stealers perhaps attacked you and you ducked underneath it but you're that's how you're doing it in your head so i enjoy a multitude of media on um 
40k video games books and um, very excited for whatever uh, superman's gonna do <laughs> after doing it um but yeah i i yeah anything and everything 40k i play and i enjoy and, and of course and space marine and looking forward to space marine too mm, um yeah they're really cool to see what goes with that oh we'll have to get you along for a play test one evening for a game yeah yeah i'd love to have an rpg that'd be great space hulk on the amiga though Wow, I'd forgotten. <laughs> oh, I could go. I played Space Hulk and is it Space Crusade. I think I played on may have been on my Amiga as well. When it was really, yeah. Space Crusade is is very much. It's it's kind of like XCOM basically, and but just it's 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 very 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 old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember playing. Me and my cousin used to sit and play Space Hulk on the Amiga, and it was terrifying. And it, even now, yeah, it was yeah, 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 it was. No, that was great. Yeah, yeah. My route was. Um, uh, I started off with Talisman, um, and it was Talisman, Blood Bowl, um, and then uh, Rogue Trader, 40k, um, and uh, well, all things Warhammer from that point on, that, including Space Hulk as well, which uh, I think I got from uh, Hammersmith Games Workshop. With <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was uh, my my monthly haunt. So uh, yeah, that's um, yeah, Space Hulk was definitely played a played a lot of that. That that, that was great. Um, yeah, actually, still, still do play it with my son now. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To to put into perspective some old things, let's remember as a dark omen. Uh, oh was, yeah, Shadow of the Horned Rats. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a brilliant game, but uh, if uh, if to put some recommendations uh, from the design point of view, I think that Mechanicus is a gem of a game. Like mm. uh, the the whole variety with a such mm, small number of elements is no small feat to achieve. It's it's really a good game, and the music is a way above like uh, what you can expect. Uh, the Gladius one, in my perspective, is way better than. All other games with a like a look alike visual with a more strategic depth, and I can recommend it to play, especially in a in a cooperative mode, either PVE or PvP, doesn't matter. And uh, in terms of like a tabletop experience, I can wholeheartedly recommend anyone to play to try to play Traitor Psychers. Uh, using the World of Darkness mage mechanics, creative taumaturgy, combining with a uh, like whole weirdness of the warp and the setting of our hammer, this mix provides the weirdest and the craziest things I've ever encountered <laughs> on, on a gaming table. Is, so, it, is that like Zen and the art of jet bike maintenance? Uh, <laughs> Worse, I guess. Way worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that definitely sounds like. No, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to manage players through that. <laughs> they come up with horrendous things. <laughs> it was a player's idea, basically. Uh, I, I was, I was DMing one of the one of the groups in a Mage's Awakening Second Edition, and uh, it was the same group I was DMing in, uh, as in a Rogue Trader, and. Uh, that the party provides the idea of oh let's try using Psychana in a whole new way and <laughs> it doesn't end well though but it was a <laughs> cool idea. Imagine Nothing not. ever isn't, does in this universe. Nothing ever no no plan ends well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have to I mention Dawn of War as well. Um but that's... yeah I was I guess we'd be remiss to mention Dawn of War, which is one of my all-time favorites. Also, Battlefleet Gothic is well worth a look. Mm. Um, loads of fun in Battlefleet Gothic and Gothic, and not so much just the the playing of the game. Obviously, it's loads of fun. But I like the um, elements they have, where you know a ship captain can want to retreat, and you can order the the commissar to shoot him, and yeah. and then like it stops the retreat. I'm like, this is so 40k. Uh, yeah, I'm a real, real big fan of that. Yeah, I think it's so much for recommendations as well for for games because I'm I'd say I'm relatively newer I'd say to to Warhammer probably than, than most people here, and um, I'm currently mostly playing Kill Team as a more like a tabletop game, 
and enjoying it so much, but I have yet to play um, more like a um, physical RPG, so to speak. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'll have to look for someone who would DM that for me. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Well, come yeah. along to a play test. We'll, uh, <laughs> we're happy to fold people in. Great. Um, I think I think we can close it here. But does anyone have any final thoughts that they would like to share? Um, well, just say thank you, really. I, I, I love talking with like-minded people about 40K. Uh, I think this could probably go on for seven hours if we were left alone. I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I also have um, Space Wolves. So I, I was looking forward to getting some jibes in, but uh, we were... <laughs> Unfortunately, you know... <laughs> I mean, if I said Thousand Suns, we, we could have gone really... We could have really gone at it, but... We could have. <laughs> Yeah, great stuff. So um, thank you, everyone. And I would like to remind you. that if you're interested in learning more about guest work, you can find the links in the event description. Also, make sure to check out our other panels for the Digital Day podcast. Yeah, thank you very much. Fantastic. Thanks, thank everybody. Thank you for having us. Thanks.